Hello and welcome back to the lab with me, Atomic Tom. Today we're going to be talking about a fascinating topic. We're going to be talking about food chains. Now, a food chain isn't a physical object. It's not like the chain you might see on a ball and chain in a story about pirates, or it's not something that you eat like a big long string of sausages. Instead, a food chain is an idea that can help us understand something really, really important. It's all about the transfer of energy. Energy is a vitally important topic in all sorts of different ways, whether it's the energy that we need to power our houses and schools or the energy that we need to live. And food chains are more to do with the second type of energy that we're thinking about. A food chain is an idea that helps us understand how energy gets passed on from one living thing to another. All living things need energy. Now with plants, they get their energy with a very complicated and clever process called photosynthesis. For example, grass uses the energy from the sun and water from the soil and other nutrients to grow. But an animal doesn't grow like that. An animal needs energy from other places. It can't get it directly from the sun. So for example, a cow will come along and eat that bit of grass and that's where the energy for the cow will come from. It'll kind of steal the energy from the grass and it will use it to power itself. Sometimes there might even be an animal that comes along that eats that animal and takes the energy from there. And that's what a food chain is. If you think of a chain, it's lots of little bits joined together. Each one of those bits is called a link. So we could put our fingers just like this, and then we could join on with another finger and thumb, and it's almost like it's eating it, just like that. With your friends, you might even be able to join on another finger and thumb and get another link in your chain. So today we're going to be making a food chain. We're not going to be watching animals eating plants and definitely not animals eating each other, but we're going to use this idea to make a paper chain with animals. Now I'm going to make it quite kind of simply. I'm just going to show you a way that you could do it but I'm sure you can make some amazing patterns and designs and you can make a really, really interesting food chain yourself. So the equipment for this is very, very simple. We need a pen. You might also want a pencil or colouring pencils, some scissors. Please be very careful with those. One piece of paper and it would probably be best to use glue, but rather than taking the time for the glue to dry, I'm just going to use a stapler. Now we need to make our individual links and the way to do this is just to cut strips on our bit of paper. So there's one like that and another one there and another one there. Now my food chain is going to be a food chain that you might have heard about in a film, a very, very famous film, The Lion King. Now, in The Lion King, you might remember Mufasa, I'm sure lots of you have seen it. Mufasa was Simba's dad, the king of all of the lions. But he was also a bit of a scientist because he taught Simba all about food chains. There's a part in The Lion King where he says the grass grows and the antelope eats the grass. Antelope's like a small deer that lives in that part of Africa and other places. And the lion eats the antelope. That's an example of a food chain. We have a plant, all food chains start with plants, in this case grass, and then we have the animal that eats the grass, and then we have the animal that eats that. So I'm going to use each one of these three bits of paper for one of those living things. As I said, you might want to colour the link for the grass in green and decorate it a bit better, but I'm just going to do it kind of quickly for you. So, grass, on this one, antelope on this one, and finally 
our lion on this one. Now, I'm sure you can make your handwriting much better than mine and put some neat patterns on. So here we have our grass and I'm just going to turn that around and turn it into one of those links by looping it around. And then we could stick it or I'm just going to staple it as I've mentioned. Now to make the chain, I need to thread this living thing through here, the antelope, because it's going to eat our grass. We'll thread that through there and then another staple. Excellent. And now we have the antelope eating the grass. And finally, we're going to put the lion on. Do lions eat grass? No. So we need to be very careful that we put it on the right end of the chain. We wouldn't want to put it on here. We need to put it on here so that it's going in the right direction. So I'll just slot that through there, join it up and click. So that is a very, very simple food chain. We have our grass, our antelope and our lion. I've stuck mine on upside down, haven't I? Might be a good idea to watch out for that. Should we pretend that I did that on purpose so that you could learn from it and not do the same mistake yourselves? Only playing, it was all part of the plan. So this is a very, very simple food chain. Just our three living things. Now, if you can think really carefully about different animals and different living things, you might even be able to make a longer chain. You might be able to think of an insect eating something and then a bird eating that and another bird eating that or a mammal eating that bird and you might be able to get four or five links in your chain. Some of you might even have heard of a food web and a food web is the even more complicated version and rather than just saying grass and antelope for what a lion might eat for example we could put all the different things that a lion could eat. So we could put a zebra on here and then we could put what that zebra might eat. We might be able to put other things that the lion might eat and we can have our lion at the top and then different animals going off in different directions. So that's the activity for this video. I wonder if you can come up with different food chains from different habitats. Can you think of somewhere cold? Think of somewhere hot? Think of a rainforest? Think of a food chain from outside the building that you're in right now. These food chains are everywhere. Just to finish off, there are a couple of really good words that we could use. I said earlier that a food chain always starts with a plant. Now, when we're thinking about the plant in the food chain, we actually give it a different name. We call all of the plants that might start a food chain, grass, leaves, fruit, seaweed. They're called producers and a producer makes. So they get the sun's energy and they use that to make themselves grow. That's the way I like to think about it. Whereas the next thing in this chain, the antelope, we call those consumers. When you consume something, you are taking it and you're making it yours. So they are taking the energy from the grass and they're making it theirs so that they can grow. They can run away from the lion. And finally, at the top of a food chain, we have things like lions and tigers and owls and some snakes and alligators and crocodiles, sharks. All of these are examples of predators. A predator is at the end of a food chain where it doesn't get eaten by anything else. It wouldn't normally be hunted by something else. So when you have your food chain and your different examples of food chains, you might be able to compare them and say to your friends, which producer have you chosen? Which predator have you chosen? Are there some consumers that eat the same producers? Are there some predators that eat the same consumers? And we can compare how the whole web of biology, the whole web of life on earth starts to mix in and complicatedly tangle up with each other. It's pretty fascinating. I hope you have lots of fun with that. 
and we'll see you for the next video. Nice big atomic science shop to finish. Atomic!